How's it going everybody? I'd like to welcome you to our VMware Data Center Virtualization series of videos. Now I'm actually really excited about this because number one, I'm a big VMware Data Center Virtualization fan, DCB for short, so I'll be using that as we move forward. I was able to successfully take and pass the VCP for DCB a few months ago. I posted a video on that when I passed it. It was a challenging exam, but it wasn't very, very difficult because I was already well-versed in VMware. If you are not well-versed in VMware, then maybe you might have some struggles with it. But I felt it was a pretty basic exam, nothing super complicated. But one of the things that it reminded me of is how much I really miss working with VMware. And over the past couple of months, I've dove into some NSX for network virtualization. I played around with a little bit about desktop mobility with Horizon View. So I've been really focusing mainly on VMware lately, and it's actually a really nice change of pace to dive into VMware versus traditionally being just a Cisco guy, right? So trying to diverse myself, diversify myself a little bit. I also have another reason, which is the real reason why I've been doing VMware a lot lately, and that's because the CCA labs are closed, right? Um, you can't take the CCA lab in the U.S., and as far as I know, you're not really able to travel outside of the U.S. to go take the CCA lab in like Australia or Brussels or anywhere else for that matter. So because of that, I don't really have much of a choice. So instead of spending a ton of time setting for a CCA and like hoping and praying that one day Cisco will open up the lab location here in the U.S., which is in Richardson, Texas, like... Why am I going to put my faith in Cisco to open back up? Why don't I just focus on other areas that would just make me a better, more well-rounded engineer? Boom. So we have a purpose now, right? We have a drive. So I started looking at my options. And the first thing I wanted to always knock out was a VMware Certified Advanced Professional Certification or a VCAP. So their VCAPs are the next level of VMware Certification. Think of the VCP, the VMware Certified Professional, as, well, the professional, right? You have a, it's, it's all theory, though. They ask you a bunch of questions, and you just click the radio button, and boom, you get a certification. Well, that's all well and great, right? It proves, the the, proves you know the theory. But I want to take that a step further. I've always wanted to get challenged in a lab exam, because I think that's really where the rubber meets the road. So it's like, if somebody asks me a question, how do you do this in vSphere, or how do you do that in vSphere? I want to be able to just do it, right? So I'm currently studying for the VCAP deploy for data center virtualization on 6.7. I have about four months until the current version of the exam is retired and is replaced with the 7.0 version. So I'm kind of in a, okay, I've got a timeline that I have to be ready by. So I can take all the stuff that I already know how to do, which is quite a bit. I already know how to do. And I'm going to go ahead and just run through it. I'm going to be focusing on some of the areas that I don't know as well out of the gate. So I can bring those areas of unknown and could be better up to a more I can do this without really thinking about it kind of deal. And that's really my goal is to focus on knocking out the VCAP deploy for 6.7. And at the same time, be focusing on the design as well. Because you have to take both the VCAP design and VCAP deploy in order to earn your VCIX or VMware Certified Implementation Expert in a particular area. I'm also going to be taking that ability to build up an environment like in, that in VMware, specifically with data center virtualization, ESXi, vCenter, all that type of stuff. I'm also diving into NSXV as well as NSXT, two really cool technologies. And then I'm also learning desktop mobility because they all kind of fit together, right? You need data center virtualization underneath everything in order to get everything up and running. Then NSX is really cool to provide a network overlay capability out in play. Then you have vSAN to do hybrid storage, hyper-converged storage. Then you have desktop mobility to provide your VDI and RDSH environment. So a lot of really cool stuff. Then you add in things like Network Insight and vRealize Operations Manager, some really cool capabilities, right? And that's really where I'm focused. So 
I'm about to switch gears and show you a network diagram. It's actually a, a topology that I'm going to be using to build out the environment. And this topology will be pretty much the flow of everything that we're going to be taking a look at in terms of the day-to-day. -day. So let's go ahead and take a look at what our network will look like once we're all deployed. All right, so let me go ahead and focus on some details. Let me go, there we go. All right, so down here at the bottom, we're gonna work our way up, okay? So basically what we have is down here in this bottom skinny, uh, skinny rectangle, we have the underlying platform. We have a Cisco UCS C220M3S with two six core Intel CPUs. So I've got two physical sockets, which each socket has six cores, and I'm running E52620s in them, uh, which gives me a total of 24 vCPUs, because when you enable two six core procs, you end up getting 12 cores, you hyperthread that, you get 24, double the number, 128 gigs of RAM, two terabytes of storage. So that gives me a lot of play room to play around with a lot of different capabilities. Then I have installed Server 2012 R2 standard evaluation on the server itself so that I don't have to pay for a license. I can just use that as I'm doing all my testing and my capability testing and whatnot. Then I install VMware Workstation 16.1 Pro on the VM itself, so the, on the server, excuse me. This is the, so the virtualization layer right here, this is going to provide me the ability to deploy all of my VMs. Now, before we get really into any of the meat and taters of what we're going to be deploying, we need to understand how it's going to all be connected and how it's going to all work. So the simple answer to that is all these lines you see, this green line, the red line, the blue, the yellow, and the white, all these connections right here, all these lines that I've drawn to the ESXi host that we're going to be deploying and whatnot, these are the VM nets. This is going to be what we're going to be deploying. So Blue would obviously be VM net zero, the subnet that's going to be associated to that for management and vSAN connectivity. The red line that connects to any ESXi host, guess what? That'll be our storage area network for providing iSCSI connectivity. Then we're going to have a data subnet, we're going to have vMotion, and we're going to have fault tolerance. Now how is all this going to get played together? The simple answer to that question is, as we go out and deploy it, the subnet or the IP address in that subnet is going to dictate in which order we deploy our devices. So we're going to deploy a VM that's going to be our management device as well as our domain controller, our DNS server, so on and so forth. So we're going to deploy Windows Server 2012 R2, we're going to connect it to the internet, we're going to download whatever bits we need to, things like Firefox and stuff like that. Once we have all that squared away, we're going to go ahead and use this guy as our management PC. So we're going to remote desktop into it and we're going to manage our ESXi environment from this PC right here. Then we're going to jump over here to dot .22. We're going to deploy a VM. So we're going to deploy a ESXi host inside a VMware workstation. We're going to give it a total of seven NICs, two for management, two for storage, one for data, one for vMotion, one for fault tolerance. So we can get all that stuff connected the way we need it to be. Once we have all that stuff rolled out, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to tie this ESXi host to the seven adapters. We're going to place those adapters in their respective subnets or the VM nets. And that's going to allow us to provide a lot of connectivity and operations. I'm going to show you guys how to work with the, the physical onboard storage. So this right here will be a basically a 100 gig hard drive that will be physically installed. Well, it will look like it's physically installed in the server. We're going to get that rolled out. We're going to deploy a VM to this shared uh, to the local storage. And then we'll go ahead and deploy VMs from that. We'll upload an operating system to the storage on the, the directly attached storage. We'll get a VM deployed on all that good stuff. Once we have all that stuff going for us, 
Then we're going to go ahead and I'm going to deploy two additional ESXi hosts, host two and host three, respectively. Connect them the same way the host one is connected. And then once we have all that squared away, then I'm going to go ahead and add in iSCSI shared storage. So we're going to deploy FreeNAS as a v storage area network or SAN VM. And it's going to have its own physical hard drive, probably 20 gigs or something like that to install the operating system. And then we're going to give it one really big hard drive, like 750 gigs or something like that. And then this hard drive right here will be basically shared out to any of the ESXi hosts that need to connect to it. So we're going to set up the iSCSI network on each one of the ESXi hosts and connect it so that it can participate in the shared storage. So each one of these ESXi hosts will be able to take advantage of the shared storage. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do, once all this has been deployed and we have some VMs rolled out, I'm going to go ahead and upload an operating, systems to, an operating system to the shared storage. Then we're going to go ahead and deploy a VM from the shared storage and get that all squared away. Then what we're going to do is deploy vCenter Server. Now where vCenter Server is going to come into play is this will allow us to take this environment to the next level. So we're going to have vCenter Server deployed. We'll go through the UI or user, uh, the user interface or the, the GUI to deploy vCenter Server with. And then we're going to join vert host 1, vert host 2, and vert host 3 to vCenter Server. We're going to play around with vCenter Server the way that it's initially set up. We're not going to add any whiz bang wow features like clusters or distributed switches or anything like that. We are going to add a capability of vMotion to vMotion some of these capabilities around. So move a VM from one host to another, things like that. Then we're going to add in distributed switches. Get the distributed switch deployed, get that pushed down to the ESXi host, all that awesomeness that comes with the VDS. Then we're going to dive into deploying more VMs. Uh, so more, you know, how do you deploy a VM from the different ways that are available to us? Then we're going to take a look at how you can take all three ESXi hosts and add them to what they call a cluster. Where a cluster allows for the high availability capabilities to come into play. So, or HA, I'll say HA because it's easier. So you have HA that will kick into play. So we'll be able to take a look at DRS. DPM. We'll be able to take a look at all kinds of other really cool stuff with clusters. We'll take a look at storage DRS. If a new VM is deployed, how do you dictate where the the storage is going to get placed? We're going to be spending a lot of time with how clusters work and all that good stuff that goes along with it. We'll spend a lot of time on storage, so we'll see exactly how that comes into play. We'll take a look at vSAN. So this little guy right here will re basically represent a flash drive so we'll basically take 128 gig ssd and we'll basically pretend like it's physically plugged in there won't actually be an ssd installed in the esxi host but one thing you can do in vcenter server is you can mark a particular storage or data store with flash as the type of storage that it is so then you can add a couple of storage icons so you can have your Flash, and then you can have your archive storage, so spinning disk or mechanical disk. We'll deploy vSAN as one of the operations. We'll also get working on the free NAS VM over here, NFS. So we'll be able to deploy file level storage if we need to, as, a, as an option if we needed to as well. So we'll be able to deploy NFS and block, uh, which is iSCSI. We're not going to be able to deploy fiber channel over Ethernet for the simple fact that we don't have FC or fiber channel capabilities in the lab. So there's that piece. We're going to spend, a, like I said, a significant amount of time on that. We'll definitely dive into storage-based policy management and network and storage I.O. control, some of the more advanced features of vSphere that come into play with all that type of stuff and all that goodness that goes along with that. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to play around uh, some additional HA features like fault tolerance and stuff like that. We're going to be able to connect all of our operating systems or our OSs or VMs to a shared connection. Now, my goal is to actually provide a connection inside of the data subnet to a, another virtual machine that will allow us to do very, very basic network connectivity 
basically just enough to allow any of the VMs that are running in a evaluation mode just to be able to register. Do some basic DNS-based pings. So there will be a router deployed on the data network that will be connected to that and be also connected to the outside world that will allow us to connect to the internet and some other stuff internally in the network so we can do some basic connectivity testing and things like that. Once we have all that deployed, I'm going to go ahead and deploy a second vCenter server. This vSec, the second vCenter server will be deployed in a, we'll take a look at the CLI installer, so it'll basically be a, kind of an auto-deploy. I'm also going to look at deploying vCenter server in, to add to an SSO domain, so we can with the kick, uh, deploy what they call enhanced linked mode, where you can uh, manage two different vCenter environments vCenter 1 and vCenter 2, for example, from a single pane of glass. So you log into vCenter 1, but you see vCenter 2's capabilities. So enhanced link mode. It's kind of a cool capability that comes into play. Then we're going to go ahead and auto-deploy an ESXi host using host profiles and the auto-deploy capability. We're going to be using that capability to push a new ESXi host image down and get everything operational the way that it needs to be. Once we have all that in place, we're going to start doing uh, shared storage. We'll get as much stuff configured as we can, operational, and all that good stuff that goes along with it. Start deploying VMs to the environment, all that cool stuff. And then we're going to go ahead and take a look at some more advanced features and capabilities that are not as popular, but they're still necessary and stuff like that. So, But I'll leave that to the rest of the lab as we're getting further along inside of it and go through all the details for that. So a lot of really cool stuff to play around with and get working. So if you guys have anything that you'd like to see covered that I can potentially dive into, please let me know in the comment section below. But that's really it. This is what we're going to be diving into when we get into our environment and all the coolness that goes along with that. So if there's I was actually really, really excited about this whole deployment because, well, it's something I've been wanting to do for a very, very long time. And guess what? I get to go do it now. So I'm super pumped. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for hanging out with me in this video. Please do me a favor and like, share, subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure you smash that like button. That's a big deal. When you subscribe, hit the little bell notification so anytime I upload a new video, you get the notification for it. I am looking at doing a twice a week video deploy, uh, upload. So I'm looking for looking to do a upload one day on the weekend and one day during the week. I'm looking for a Wednesday, Saturday. So I have kind of a break in between my uploads. So I can do like, you know, upload Saturday. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, upload on Wednesday, have Thursday, Friday, upload again on Saturday. That's my goal. Um, and then I'm also going to be bringing back the live stream in case anybody's interested in diving into that. I'm going to be mainly VMware focused. That's my goal with all the stuff that I'm looking at here for the, the VMware stuff. It's a lot of really cool stuff that I'm going to be diving into. So hopefully that's an interest to you. I want to thank you guys for stopping by and hanging out with me in this video. Again, if you have any, if you have any questions or like, would like to see something covered a certain way, leave me a comment in the comment section below. Definitely please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch all of you in the next video.